All right, so I'm just going to do one last problem. Um, I think this is number, or this is F on activity four on the worksheet we did yesterday. And um, so we want to decide if it's S and one or S and two and draw the product with the correct stereochemistry. And I'm going to do the mechanism too. So with this one, we have <clears throat> a secondary substrate that's connected to two different carbons, but we have a weak nucleophile. So that makes it SN1, because you have that ambiguity with um, secondary substrates. So the first thing that happens in any SN1 reaction is the spontaneous cleavage of the, uh, of the halide from the uh, alkyl halide. So you only need one reaction arrow, and that is going to bring you to your carbocation. Nothing happened to that ethyl group, and we just have a positive charge here. So you might think now that you might get a um, an ethyl shift or you know shifts within the molecule to um, to stabilize that charge, but in this case, if you just move this over to here, do an ethyl shift, you get you basically just get the same thing. You not only get the exact same molecule or the exact same ion, but what's more important is that you still have a secondary carbocation. So no ethyl shift or anything is going to happen with this one. And it's going to go straight from here. Um, so your nucleophile in this case is the water. So I'm going to draw it out. And then one of the electron pairs is going to attack the, um, the positively charged carbon to give you this. I shouldn't draw like that. All right, so you have, so now we have an oxygen atom connected um, to, with three line bonds, basically. I just didn't draw this one out. So it's connected to three different things and it only has one lone pair, so it has a positive charge. So what happens from this part is there's another water molecule in solution. And it's gonna take one of the protons off and one of the electrons, the electron pair between the proton and the, um, and the oxygen atom are going to go onto the oxygen to stabilize the charge and you're going to get your product. And that sort of thing happens anytime you have um, an SN1 reaction with a weak nucleophile. So this weak nucleophile could have been like an alcohol. And you basically just end up um, with the OCH3 part attached and not the OH. So just recognize that distinction whenever you use an alcohol to, um, to do a substitution reaction. And then, and then in this step to dissociate, okay, so if you added an alcohol, it would look like this, right? I'm just gonna draw the ethyl because I'm lazy. And then the alcohol would be attached like this. And so in this case, also the oxygen is positively charged, right? So then now another alcohol molecule comes in. And takes the proton away. So just keep in mind that it's much more likely for, or the alcohol is definitely going to take away the proton with a lone pair from the oxygen, right? And not the methyl group. Because that's not, that's not as likely. And you'd end up with the product. But okay, so going back... Go back to where we were. So we added the you added the water, took a lone pair from the water, and um, and neutralized the carbocation. So that put a positive charge in the oxygen because it has two lone or yeah two lone pairs. I'm sorry, two line bonds. A lone pair. Okay, sorry, three lone three line bonds and a lone pair. So it has a positive charge. So then another water molecule came in and took one of its electron pairs, took off the proton, and then the electrons between the oxygen atom and the proton go onto the, um, go onto the oxygen atom, and you get your product. And so this is an SN1 reaction. So just remember that you have a racemic mixture of products. So I'll draw my first product with the original stereochemistry. 
So it'll we'll just have that. And just keep in mind that there's an implicit hydrogen here. So you can draw you can draw it in like a wedge bond here with your hydrogen if you'd like. But what's really important is just to draw that just draw the distinction between the um the hydroxyl groups in the two different products. This is getting really small, but I think it still might work. So you get two products here. <clears throat> so now going back to the alcohol, I hope this isn't too confusing. So the alcoholic product would look like this. If we just added the methanol. So make sure you're getting So make sure if you if you're adding an alcohol to um, even in even in S and two reaction, this is the way it goes. If you're adding an alcohol to um, or if you're substituting an alcohol into an alcohol halide, make sure the O organic part, the O methyl, the O ethyl, the O propyl, or whatever part, is being attached to the molecule, not the OH, because that's the it's just it's just a consequence of the mechanism. This is just one of those reasons why. Um, Knowing the mechanism is really important because if you if you know this mechanism back and forth, you know there's no way there's no way if you substitute an alcohol in with an alcohol halide that you're going to get an you know an OH part. You're gonna, always going to end up with an ether. So that's really yeah that's really important to note. So if you have water with an SN in an SN one or SN two. Know that you'll end up with an alcohol. And if you have an alcohol that goes through an SN1 or an SN2 mechanism, know that you'll get an ether. That's really important. Now the alcohol, I mean, so you know that the alcohol is... Um, not the best nucleophile, but that doesn't mean it won't react via SN2. It'll just be it'll just be slower. It's just not as energetically favorable. But uh, just keep in mind of those things every time or whenever you think of these problems. So good luck.